For this project, I decided to make an animated character illustration. Uh, so kind of a, with a dramatic pose and some wind acting on the character's clothes and a few animated elements here and there. Uh, so I started off with a drawing with a strong silhouette and uh, there are plenty of parts to the drawing that can be affected by wind, like the hair, the sash and the skirt that I could animate. Then to make organizing the animation process easier, I separated some of the animated parts into different groups that could be animated separately on separate layers. I also threw on some ideas for color. I started off by uh, allowing importing images as planes and imported my sketch as well as my color-coded animation plan into an empty Blender 2D project. And then in my grease pencil object, I started tracing over the base of the character the parts that are in grey, which are the parts that would not be moving. I drew a little bit more of the trousers since it may reveal more of the legs when I get down to the animating. With some different coloured materials, I set about sketching out each of the animated parts on separate layers on my grease pencil object. And uh, I changed my mind about the sash and I added it to its own layer coding with the green instead of including it with the blue elements. Since I wanted this animation to be a loop, I copied all the frames to the end of the timeline so that I make sure that it, uh, it always goes back to that first position. I then added a few keyframes uh, in the middle to figure out the extremes of the billowing skirt. I then filled in more in-betweens to smoothen out the motion on the skirt. I repeated the same process on all the other animated layers and uh, I used the way the skirt was moving as a reference for how all the other parts would move since they are being affected by the same wind. So if the wind is stronger on the skirt it's got to be stronger on all of the other elements and be blowing in the same direction. It's not necessary to draw every frame uh, for every part of the drawing, so sometimes I would leave a gap of like one or two frames. Uh, it helps to make it seem more natural and less jittery. For the segmented elements like the hair and the tassels that have kind of strands, I offset the motion of some of the parts to allow them to overlap a little bit. And that's the main animation done. Then I got down to filling in the colors and final lines on the base layer, as well as adding some detail to the face. And with the base layer done, I made new layers for each of the animated elements, starting with a skirt. And I lined them and filled them in. And I repeated the same process for all of the animated parts. I played around a bit with the color palette to find a scheme that I like. That's the advantage of using grease pencil. You can just change any of the material colors. I then started experimenting with some overlays and some shadows. I made this layer as a mask over all the base layers so that I could add shadows to the face and the armor and under the skirt. I also created an animated shadow layer at the top of the layer stack to add shadows to all the moving elements. I'm adding a couple highlights to the armor. Uh, I duplicated this keyframe and sculpted the shine spots a little bit to change their shapes just slightly. And then I duplicated that same sequence of frames to make it look like the metal is gleaming or glimmering. I decided to add the blink to make the character seem more alive. I threw on another layer of shadows and a few background elements. And I animated the grass with the sculpt tool. And here's the final animation. <laughs> 